Hey everyone, welcome back to Sully's Rods and Customs. Today we're going to be stripping down and rebuilding this Holden HQ manual steering box. Comes out of my coop. Um, got a few tools here that I think I should need for the job. Um, got myself comfortable on a stool and a table. Purchased the rare spares. Um, it says a repair kit, steering box repair kit for HQ, HJ, HX, HZ. Um, excluding power steering so that's the um, that's the little tag there that you'll see um, its code number is SBHQZ so steering box HQZ so it comes in a little packet in that packet you get the two the two bearings um, that, that are inside the, the steering box you get the gasket or end seal that goes on this end plate over here in this sort of direction like this um, and you also get the two seals. There's a, um, a lip seal in the packet and an O-ring in the packet. So there's the lip seal which comes um, out this end of the shaft here. And there's the O-ring which is in this end of the shaft. So um, you get everything you need for the job. Um, what I'm going to do today is strip this thing down, show you inside. I'll zoom in a bit closer and show you what's happening inside this thing. Um, once I get the basics done outside. Um, they're a ball screw um, gearbox. So the gearbox has has a when you turn this shaft here, it um, it turns it turns like a little worm um, drive inside, and it has balls inside the ball nut, and that nut has the has the the gear in it that meshes into this output output crown wheel gear here. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about when I open it up. So first things first, we'll get the the nut off. Once, I'm going to strip, once I strip this down, I'm going to do some degreasing and cleaning. I probably won't show that part, but um, other than that, we'll, um, we'll show you everything that happens with it. So to start off with, we're going to take this end cap off here. I'll just zoom in and we'll get you a closer look at it. The nuts have been a little bit... Um, beaten up over the years so they've also this steering box has been sandblasted and, and primed as part of the whole car being um, blasted and stripped down. I'll quickly strip this apart here and show you what's happening inside. I'll release the I'll release the tension off this um, this is what controls the end plate in your shaft. So first thing I like to do is back the nut off Start where it starts here. See how much, see how much of a turn I get out of this. So I get that's a half a turn. It's like it's like three quarters of a turn. I'll put it back where it was. I'll take this end cap off now. Um, these aren't a they're not an oil filled gearbox. They're a, a grease lubricated item. Um, but this thing kind of gives me the impression that it's just chock a block full of oil because it just kept leaking oil the whole time I was testing the car. So just hold the cap in there. There's a bit of a spring inside here you've got to, got to retain. You'll see there how it's pushing it out. That's um, in a really bad way. That grease inside is just turned to cake. <laughs> So with that part out, you should be able to take this internal shaft straight out here once I get it aligned. I'll just, I'll just show you inside before I pull it apart. So inside here, you'll see as I turn this shaft, when it's in, it's in its right position in there, when I turn this shaft, the ball screw is in that nut in the bottom there, and this bit just has its teeth on it. So you can see this piece here. This item here has a, a spring on it and a washer on it. You need to make sure you keep them in the correct position. And this should not have this much oil and crap inside this thing. Uh, like I mentioned before, this is a this is a ball screw. So I'll show you what happens with it when I pull it apart. In this back part here, it's got needle roller bearings in there. I'll be pulling them out, cleaning them, re-lubricating them, putting them back in there. Everything worked fine on this on this. Um, steering box mechanically it just leaked oil so i figured i'd give it a service while um 
while I go to the part. So this nut on the back here, I'll move these bits out of the way. I'll put this back in the position it came out of. Let that come out of that way there. That shaft was on that side there. Just pulling up this oil and crap down here. So you have to undo this lock nut first. So just get a bigger hammer than that to unlock it. Move then. Wasn't watching it. Get it move. And then you've got to undo this nut here on the back of it, and you'll be able to get the the ball screw nut out. And again, I'll show you what that is when I when I get it out. Just take this big nut off the back with the lock nut on it. There you go. So there's, there's just the end of the, the end of that nut. I'll just show you what it's like inside. Pulling all this oil and crap out of it. So it just has, just clean this thing out. I'll show you what's going on here. So you can see it's just an aluminium nut with a lock nut on it. Um, but I did notice some stuff coming out the bottom of this gearbox here. There's some, oh, there you go. That's, that's very surprising. So the, the bearing that normally sits in the back over here, because there's the race inside there, one of these bearings. So the cup is in the back of there, but all the parts from it, all the balls are laying out here. So this thing, Worked perfectly fine in the car, so that's very surprising that it's um, coming out in bits and pieces here. So you can see this side here. Here's the here's the washer. Here's the washer. Here's the bearing on the front side that um, that runs in the end of that um, gearbox in there. So as it as this turns, you can see as this turns, you can see it runs backwards and forwards very freely. So I know the balls inside are in good condition. I'll show you what the balls are inside this thing in a second. At the moment, <laughs> this has had some sort of catastrophic failure because here's all the here's all the pieces. Of, I'm not sure if you can see. Let me that out of the way. These are all the pieces of the bearing inside. So these pieces here, and I'll get to the side here. Got the oil drain back down. There's the inner race there. I'll leave that sitting up there with that draining out. So these pieces that are here are one of these bearings. So that, that's what that is supposed to look like. Like I said, it's very surprising. This um, this steering box had no issues other than other than oil leaks and and leaks coming out of it. So um, that's a bit of a concern for me. I'm really lucky I actually pulled this thing apart. Oh, I'm going to reverse my sore finger. So inside the back here is is the back of the race of one of these one of these bearings here. Let's clean this oil up. So now it's apart. Um, I've got some more cleaning to do. I'm going to strip this thing down. I'll strip the, the needle rollers out of it. Um, wash it in my degreasing tank and bring it back over here as a, as a clean unit ready to start assembling. So I'll try and get you a bit of a close up <clears throat> of this part. So this is the, um, the ball screw. This is what I'm talking about, right? So when you screw the shaft, it goes back and forwards, but if this, if this was fixed between gears there, if this was fixed between ends, as you screwed that, it would move, it would move this along one way or the other. And that moving back and forward is what turns that gear on the, um, on the output shaft. 
So inside here, you can't you can't screw this thing out, right? It it goes to one end, stops. Goes the other end, stops. It has um like the end of the the machined. This is a actual bearing face, and the ball bearings inside at the end of this machine groove bearing face. It has like an end point, so it has a stopper, so the the thing can't screw out. So what you got to do is you got to as this thing rotates around, as this thing spins, what it's doing is it's just re recirculating the balls around these tubes here. So I'll get these tubes out and I'll show you what they are. And you just got to remember to keep all the balls. I got a little cap here. You can see in this part here, there's one, two there. Um, there's another two. Probably easier just to pop this thing right out and just um, put all the balls back in there anyway. But um, so get it up here, rotate it around, let all the balls spill through the gap. There's heaps of them in there. And as you do, you'll be able to get the shaft out. All the balls will be in there. You'll see there's quite a few ball bearings in there. And then you're left with the the ball screw nut, which is this part here. As you can see, it doesn't show any, any wear on the gears there. It has a small mating face where you can see the actual, this opposing part has been running in there. As, this is, as that ball screw is going back and forward, it's actually doing this, this output shaft. So that's what's, this part here is the screw turning from your steering wheel. Um, and that as like coming from where my thumb is here and as, you, as it screws up and down like this it's turning the shaft which turns the output shaft which steers your car um, left or right so what I'm going to do here now is spray a bit of brake and parts cleaner inside the screw just to clean out all the crap that's inside there you don't actually have to scrub it with anything if you're using this stuff it, it breaks down that grease really quick. I'll turn it over to the other side as well. Yeah, I don't recommend scrubbing it internally with anything. I just recommend putting a nice clean rag in there and giving it a bit of a wipe down. Um, giving it a blow with some compressed air. side of this rag. I'm only using it because it's still got brake and clutch cleaner on it. And there you'll see inside this inside this ball screw is really clean. A little bit of stuff still in there. There. Nice and clean. Okay, reassembly time. So, what we got here is I um, have the ball screw here. I have the ball nut here. I got some um, bearing grease beside me here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe a bit around inside the ball screw um, bearing journals internally in here because you're going to thread all those balls back into this into this block in a little while and um, you need the balls to sort of stick in place and not just roll around and... So because the camera stopped, my memory card was full, I'll strip this apart and I'll show you again what you have to do. So if I pry these tubes out, put one there, put one there. So what I've done is I've thread balls, I've threaded the balls back down through these holes 
and I think I've got 27 from memory in each one of these holes and the rest of them I put inside I think it's 27 in total but um, that one's got to go down there and that one's got to go down there um, but when you're done you actually have to get the last couple of balls that don't put them in too high in these holes here make sure they're in and they're down quite low and the last couple of balls from maybe four or five balls from each one you put them inside these tubes you put the tubes back down over the top like this give it a bit a bit of a tap in there same with this other side here put it down in there give it a bit of a tap make sure this runs with no play runs in and out freely put the clamp over the top put the screw in which retains the um, the clamp and that's the bolt screw overboard so I didn't want to pull it totally apart again but um, I put some grease on the main shaft like this um, and I put some some grease inside the screw itself so inside the body of this the block um, and then I cleaned all the balls thread them down and like I said I think it was 27 in each one of these tubes probably put 22 in each tube in each um, each one of the holes and as I put them in I just pushed them I just sort of held the shaft up and kept pushing one ball in there one in there one in there one in there until I got them evenly in each one and I just rotated a bit to like see if don't rotate it too far because the bullet can actually come out the end because the tube's not there to retain it so just keep pushing them in and pushing them in most of the times you can push them with your fingers like I said the last four or five put them inside these return tubes and push them in on the top and tap them down knock them in there so I'll just double check that I tighten that yeah, that's good so that's the screw part complete like you can see now the screw moves nice and smooth you hear the grease tacking up pretty well in there. Um, I already put the <laughs> when the video stopped before. I already put the the new um, the new bearing race out of out of race in the end of here. So um, I'll just put a bit of grease around around that race there just to keep it all lubricated. And the same in the one in the end of. Of the shaft into the right down there so um, for that one down there lubricating the bearing will be sufficient so on um, what am I doing here yep, on the end of this screw shaft here is where the inner race of this bearing runs so um, take some grease pack it in the back of this bearing because it's really open in the back side of it um, make sure the grease is all the way through and around the front of the bearing there slide it on the shaft take the other inner race same again lubricate it with grease make sure it's all over the body as well put it on the end of that one now you want the nut to be return tubes down and the gear side facing up when you put it inside this direction, sorry, it goes in shaft end first. Oh, sorry, there's one more thing we've got to do before we do that. We have to put the O-ring in the end of the housing. Let's put that aside for a sec. The end of this housing here has an O-ring that goes in there, which is this small O-ring here. So squeeze it down. It's really difficult to do in, with gloves on, but um, I've got a busted finger so I can't I can't get the splint all greased up so I'm gonna try and get it in here without there you go going straight in there give that a little bit of a little bit of grease in that around that o-ring and then shove this through through that bearing out the o-ring the shaft is now seated in the end there I'll screw this back until the, the nut part, which you can see inside here. You see that nut part there is now in the middle. Let me just make sure that hasn't stopped filming again. Nope, that's still, 
Still going, yep, which is good. And you can see what I'm talking about inside, which is good. And now, put this bearing on the end of that shaft there. Balance it till it's approximately in the middle. This end cap's got to go back on. Like I said, you put a bit of, bit of grease in there, just to, which I've already done. Put the end cap on with the bearing centralized. And screw this nut up. I'll show you what you got to do with the end play when we get towards the end of this job. Get that lock nut back. Right at the moment, that's locked up. I'm just going to leave it just snug like that for now. Um, next job is turn this over. We're going to knock the new seal in. Here's the new seal here. And remember, with lip seals, you've got to put the lip side which is this loose side down um, i think i have a a seal punch bearing punch here, here somewhere maybe that will um have the right size one for that type of seal that looks to be pretty good i'll just take this and this little, little rubber mallet. Actually, I'll put it this way around. So this is the seal punch, seal and bearing punch kit. You can see this is what it actually looks like. Um, and just put it on top of your seal there. Give it a tap so it goes down nice and square. That's it. It's in there now. It's sitting up against the back of that seal face or the bearing face there all right so now i'm going to pack those needle rollers with plenty of grease there we go that's then packed um, we have this other set here where I've cleaned it all, cleaned all the noodle rollers out. Dad, when yeah. is your tire going to be here? Should be here soon, but Dylan. Maybe, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour? 20 minutes long. That's not very long. <laughs> it's my daughter asking when her friends are going to be here for a play date. Let's just clean the excess grease off the top of there. So flip this baby over. So here's our shaft all cleaned, ready. It's gonna go through that direction there. Sorry, this side down. So I'm going to grease, grease the gear inside here. Plenty of grease on there. I'm going to grease these faces of it here. Put some grease around the end here where the bearings are gonna run. Just so it's plenty on everything. Now this shaft goes through that way, so I'm going to get it carefully through that end needle rollers there. Push that in. No, I'm not. I'm going to take that out because this spring goes on first with this. This is what keeps your pressure back on the on the gears back here so this pushes back so you can see it spring back this is what keeps the end float back on this item here so um, what I've got to do now is I've got to put put the seal in here so I need a bit of brake and caliper cleaner clean that face up I need some of that on here too to clean this place up. 
and this is not a joint where you cake on heaps of sealant on it it's just a, a dry gasket face now I've got to work out which way this baby goes all right looks like it goes that way but the holes don't line up looks like they've cut the gasket wrong so here's the old one I'll clean it up and I'll show you what I'm talking about and here's the new one so this is from rare spares so rare spares you need to lift your game with these sets you can see here I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about this is a genuine a genuine hold and seal at the back so those two top holes are are already out misaligned right there and this bottom one is nowhere near it so I can probably slide these top bolt holes down a bit what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to scallop out the bottom of that hole there take a bit of meat out of in there to enable this thing to be down far enough on that to, to seal so all right I'm going to just trim this seal a bit now Line those two top holes up as best I can, which don't really line up. Flip this over. I'm going to try and cut this internally where it's overhanging the old seal without cutting my finger with this Stanley knife. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm trimming the inside of this seal where it's not the right size. It doesn't even fit in that body shape there. And I've got to trim this bottom hole out enough to fit too. All right, that should, should be enough to make it work. Let's see. Not really, that's gonna have some more off the inside of this. I mean, it's not an overly expensive set to buy this seal kit, but you just expect it to work. How hard is it to make a gasket? It'd be bloody easy. You could almost make one easier with your um with your Stanley knife. So that bottom hole is going to line up now, but those two top holes will be very close. Let's um, let's just pause the video. I've got to clean these clean these bolt heads up. Okay, so I've got the gasket sorted. Let's get this grease out of the way. Um, got the nuts sorted here. But what you've got to think about is these three bolt holes go through through the here into a into the body of this, right? So I've still got to work out whether I need to fill this with oil or just with the grease I've got in there is sufficient. Um, but the, each of these bolts, you need to put a little bit of sealant on them. Otherwise, they can leak out the thread and you can get um, an external leak on it. So I just put a little bit of RTV on the thread. Nice shit on it there. Try and keep your hands clear of it when you're putting this thing together. Stick all the bolts 
through the holes once you've got it on there. Put a bit more on here. Doesn't need a lot, it's just, it's just got to fill, fill the void where the thread would normally be. Careful you don't get the um, the sealant on the body of the on the body of the um, gearbox or the the gears because it um, all right so it looks like it's going on at the moment. Get all the nuts started through that sketchy gasket there. There you go, you see it's going on there, no problem. Alright, let's um, tighten this baby back up again. This really doesn't take long, I think. In total, I've probably been sitting here maybe including the cleaning time there before at the cleaning tank. I've probably been here for two hours, fully stripped and fully assembled, reassembled again using the new kit they got there from Rare Spares, which again, I'm saying be, be a bit weary of because it's not, um, everything's fit perfect except that gasket. So just make sure you trim that gasket to, to suit. Now, what did I say? When I, I screwed this in before, I said I had it in all the way, and then I backed it off. So that's in all the way, and it's tight. Now I come back three quarters of a turn. So let's say there's one, that's three quarters of a turn there. Let's just nip that up for now. the gearbox working like it should get rid of all the excess grease around it I'm gonna have to give this thing another degrease before I paint it um, there's the big washer back on there there's the nut back on it all I can do now is um check my end float on this part of the box here which means I've got to check this for tightness. Um, what I'll do is I'll just get my manual and I'll just double check what it actually says there. All right, so recap. What I did with this um, nut here was I adjusted it back to what I had before. I um, had the lock nut loose. I screwed this in. You remember this is spring loaded, right? So it gets a little bit stiff to push that way. So make sure you screw it in nice and hard until it actually stops. And I come back, um, I come back a half a turn on that because it was a brand new bearing. It was three quarters before, but obviously one of them was a bit damaged and fell to pieces when I pulled it apart. Um, and on this end nut here, um, what I did is I screwed it in all the way again and I turned it back one flat. So I turned it until it stopped by hand and I turned it back one flat. So that flat there was was there and I turned that one back to there and I locked it up and you can see it moves really smooth here now there's no backlash in it at all everything's nice and tight um, like I said I just got to work out now if this thing takes oil or if it takes grease so I'm just gonna have a quick read of that manual there and um, and work out what it um, what it actually takes to fill up Alright, so recap, what I did with this um, nut here was I adjusted it back to what I had before. I um, had the lock nut loose, I screwed this in. You remember this is spring loaded, right, so it gets a little bit stiff to push that way. So make sure you screw it in nice and hard until it actually stops. And I come back, um, I come back a half a turn on that because it was a brand new bearing. It was three quarters before, but 
obviously one of them was a bit damaged and fell to pieces when I pulled it apart. Um, and on this end nut here, um, what I did is I screwed it in all the way again and I turned it back one flat. So I turned it until it stopped by hand and I turned back one flat. So that flat there was, was there and I turned that one back to there and I locked it up and you can see it moves really smooth here now. There's no backlash in it at all. Everything's nice and tight. Um, like I said, I just got to work out now if this thing takes oil or if it takes grease. So I'm just going to have a quick read of that manual there and, um, and work out what it, um, what it actually takes to fill up. I'll go down to the local shop and see what they've got down there. I'll fill this baby up. What I'll do is to fill it, I will remove, I'll stand on its end, remove that bolt down there. I stand it up on its edge and I'll just use a sucker and I'll just pump it into it loop it back and forward. It, it, it's nice and smooth at the moment. You can see here how easy that shaft turns and how much it moves that one there. There's no no plane at all, which is great. Um, like I showed before, there's the steering repair kit, which is the two bearings, the two seals, um, and the gasket, which you have to modify a bit to fit there because it was in correct shape. Um, and just a bit of assembly grease, some degreasing, and a bit of a bit of time and um, and you can do it so next next thing I'll do like I said is I'll, I'll fill this baby up with the grease or the, the correct greasy oil um, Holden stopped making it a while back um, and then I'll paint this thing and next time you see it'll be it'll be in the car attached to my steering um, steering control system down the front there so all right that's it for today's episode um, I've got the transmission on like I showed in the last video there. Um, the steering box bolts are just here, ready to bolt in. Steering's all connected up. Um, I've just got to put the split pins in the end of these tie rod ends once I'm, once I'm done here. Um, I didn't know whether I had to pull it, up, pull it back off before I put the steering box in. The steering box just bolts with these three bolts go through these holes here and through into the back of the box. The box has threads on it, so um, keep watching and we'll get that one underway as well. I might actually include the installation of this steering box with the um, with this video. Alright, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to the like and hit the like and subscribe button. Um, all the subscriptions help. All the likes help. It shows YouTube that I'm doing something well and people are enjoying it. So hope you did enjoy it. See you next time.